Hi, everyone, and happy Migraine Awareness Month. Now, those of you who live with vestibular migraine often feel like the odd ones left out because everybody else is talking about headache and that's not your issue. Vestibular migraine is a problem that we have to take really seriously and get better diagnosis for and better awareness of. And to help us talk about vestibular migraine this Migraine Awareness Month, we have Dr. Tom Willings from Newcastle. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Absolute pleasure. Now, vestibular migraine is your specialty or vestibular disorders generally. Yes, yes. Dizzy patients. Dizzy patients. And you've got a great centre there in Newcastle, which we'll talk about in a sec. And you also visit Port Macquarie, you just told me, which I'm sure many of our port people will be very happy to know. So tell us roughly, basically, in the most simple way you can, what is vestibular migraine? Okay, so uh, vestibular migraine is a disorder where people get dizziness vary tremendously from very brief to very prolonged uh, and it's associated with migraine and I suppose uh, understanding what vestibular migraine is actually requires an understanding of what migraine is uh, because in uh, when we talk about migraine people often focus about headache Mm -hmm. but what migraine is actually at the at the heart of it is a sensory disorder Mm -hmm. uh, where people are hypersensitive to a wide range of things so it can be to light or to sound or to smell or to movement and and in talking to people with migraine uh, I can often tell them that they're motion sick before before they tell me that that's the case I can give no I can talk about their the inability to go backwards on a train or the inability to watch action movies uh, with fast car scenes or the the difficulty experience when they go to a a theatre and the sound is too loud Mm -hmm. or the the difficulty walking through a supermarket uh, with the uh, the patterns on the shelves or crowds with people going in all different directions and how uncomfortable people can feel even between times when they're not having headaches. Mm. Uh, so, so vestibular symptoms are extremely common uh, in most people who have migraine. It's just mm. that because the headache is so disabling, mm. uh, especially when people are younger, typically uh, it's where their focus goes. But in fact, the vestibular symptoms can become disabling for people as well. And, and uh, the, the time that that often, often happens is often uh, when people's headaches start to settle somewhat. So I see people who have had terrible headaches in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, their headaches settled and now they're having significant dizziness. Mm. And they say, but this can't be my migraine. I've never had dizziness quite to this extent before. Mm but actually it's still part of the same disorder. It's a sensory processing issue. It's a hypersensitivity disorder rather than a disorder of there being a failure of the balance organs in the ears or something being broken. Mm. It affects so many common things um, in our life, right? Like going to the shops, like, you know, going on a train. So how do you um, distinguish something like vestibular migraine from another vestibular disorder? So when I see people with vestibular disorders, with dizziness, there's, there's two main reasons somebody might have uh, dizziness in the patient groups that I see. There are people who have a problem with their balance organs, something where something's actually broken or not functioning. So a condition like benign positional vertigo, where there's loose crystals in one ear when they lie down, the world spins around transiently. And that's a mechanical problem with a mechanical solution. We can tip the crystals out and make them better. Or it may be that they've had an injury to the balance organ in one ear caused by a virus or caused by something like that. And and that's, once again, a very much uh, a dysfunction between the two sides, meaning that we can't feel how we're moving properly. And it's horrible. Whereas in vestibular migraine, the balance organs themselves are not broken and there's no problem within the pathways. The problem is more that patients with vestibular migraine have hypersensitivity to movement. And there's been some nice um, experimental uh, studies looking at this, that people with vestibular migraine actually feel themselves swaying more than they are. Mm. And that's what they often report. I feel like I'm rocking. I feel like I'm moving. I feel like I'm on a boat all the time Uh, and sometimes the intensity gets worse especially during attacks and at times because of that getting worse we can actually see abnormal eye movements Mm. uh, in these people but the problem is actually how sensitive their brain is to to what's going on rather than actually there being something that's broken 
Okay, and so, so how that do you, focuses how do you on how we it? have to treat it. We have to approach it from a sensitivity perspective. So that's a really difficult thing. Um, <laughs> there's vestibular migraine is really a clinical diagnosis. And because of that, uh, it makes people argue about whether it even exists. And there are still neurology colleagues on my uh, th that I know who will say, don't talk to me about vestibular migraine, it's just anxiety, mm -hmm. but it's not. Uh, and because we can see this symptom complex come together, it's like saying that migraine is just anxiety, mm -hmm. but it's not. You can't do a test to prove it's migraine. Mm. Uh, migraine is a clinical diagnosis and sometimes the tests are done to exclude other important things but the diagnosis is made on the basis of a clinical presentation so the difficulty in vestibular migraine is that there is no test the balance organs we test them we make sure that they're working normally uh, sometimes we can record eye movements during attacks and people can get a wide range of eye movements. Sometimes they have normal eye movements, but it doesn't mean they're not dizzy. Mm. But not all people are the same, just like not all migraines are the same. Mm. In fact, one of the best tests that we have uh, is a test that I've actually presented at one of our local meetings, which is to take a shirt like the one I'm wearing today, which makes people with migraine feel intensely uncomfortable, mm. um, and ask a person, how uncomfortable they find it to look at my shirt mm. uh, and ask from no discomfort to terrible discomfort. And if they mark more than about a third way along the line, then they're about 85% likely to have vestibular migraine as the cause of their dizziness before I do any further testing. That's pretty so, simple. So that's about as good a test as we've got, uh, which is, it is. Uh, look, most dizzy people have something that they're aware of, like Aboriginal paintings in the, in the, um, in the waiting room with lots of lines or patterns and dots that make people with migraine feel uncomfortable. Some people have various carpet at some point in their practice where if somebody walks through, they'll say, oh, I don't like that carpet. Uh, as for me, I just happen to have a family who likes buying me gingham shirts. Uh, <laughs> and that means that I have a lot of them. Very and useful. When I do a dizzy clinic, I do, I do ensure that actually. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Look, I, I love your shirt and it doesn't make me feel that uncomfortable. Uh, is it, it uh, like a spectrum thing in terms of how much vestibular symptoms you have with your migraine? Uh, absolutely. So the, the thing is that not everybody has exactly the same sensitivities and, and not everyone has exactly the same spectrum of, of symptomatology. Mm -hmm. And some people can do some things better and other people have other, uh, other things. Some people have intermittent symptoms where they're very sensitive but between times they're not too bad mm. other people have very much chronic sensitivity and feel awful a lot of the time yeah. uh, and, and and so the the difficulty is not everyone's the same just just like migraine attacks some people have attacks that last in terms of headaches people have attacks that last three hours mm. but are terrible with very early nausea and totally unable to function but they'll come good after three or four hours. Mm. Some people will have days where they'll be knocked out or unable to function. Some people have aura without much headache, but they'll feel like they've been run over by a steamroller with that post migraine post drome, the, the hangover that you get after the headache. Uh, so this is the difficulty in difficulty writing criteria and things to make a diagnosis mm. uh, because everybody's very different. But if you talk to a, a dizzy neurologist or someone that sees lots of vestibular migraine, what they'll tell you is we know it when we see it uh, and we can make a difference by getting on and treating it. And are there different treatments for people that have mostly vestibular symptoms? There are. So a common thing that we see is that people have been put on a medication called Stematil, which is an anti-nausea medication, and they've just been dumped on that for vertigo mm. by their GP. Um, and that can help a little nausea to some, to some extent, but it's actually a dangerous medication to be on in the long term, and mm. it's not really beneficial. Some people have been put on a medication called CERC or uh, beta histine, which isn't even on the PBS, so it's very expensive. Mm. Uh, and one might argue that there's absolutely no evidence that CERC works for anything, which mm. is why it's not on the PBS. Uh, but using migraine preventative treatments we can make a difference to vestibular migraine. Now, the problem is that the as required treatments that we use for headache, they're great for headache potentially, but they don't do much for the dizzy spells, unfortunately. So the only way to manage it is actually to try to prevent it. 
Mm. Now, in, in terms of the options, there are many options for headache, but the options for vestibular migraine are a little bit less. So not all medications that have benefit for headache in, in prevention work for vestibular migraine. Mm. But there's, there's three that are particularly useful. One is the class of medication called tricyclic antidepressants or amitriptyline. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's always important to flag when giving people that, that I'm not trying to put them on an antidepressant by subterfuge. Mm. I'm, I'm not trying to tell them they're depressed. I'm using it for the neurological indications mm. uh, rather than trying to treat their mood. Though some of them end up depressed because of how they feel. Mm. Um, to pyramate also has some particular benefit uh, in, in dizzy migraine. And then a medication that's not easily available in Australia. So flunarazine or cinarazine uh, can also be very effective and, and they're medications that I often have to, to go to lengths to get to pe get for people uh, when, when they're not able to tolerate or not responsive to the other treatments. Hmm. So it, I'm guessing they're not on the PBS, those two other ones? No, they're not on the PBS, which makes life pretty difficult. Yeah, like our CGRPs. <laughs> we're we're well, all getting quite familiar with just how hard life yes. is about drugs. Well, the, the, these drugs are positively ancient, in fact, mm. and they're used extensively in Europe. The, the issue is not like it is for the CGRPs as much as the usage of the medication is not enough to warrant some drug company trying to actually get it through the, the whole process of getting it listed on the PBS rather than that they wouldn't actually be able to. So it's more, it's more a, a finance and impetus rather than uh, an issue of the, it being hideously expensive. Whether, yeah. whether, whether CGRPs work for vestibular migraine, that's, that's another question. We really don't know the answer to that question at this stage. Yeah, anecdotally, it's not working as well for our vestibular friends as it is, particularly for hemiplegic. Hemiplegic seems to knock it out of the park. I don't know mm. why, but we look forward to those future studies about, you know, who the CGRPs are working best for. Um, I'm sure that they are already in motion uh, and being done in various centres all over the place. Alrighty, Tom, is there anything that you would like to say, some recommendations, advice to a patient who thinks they have vestibular migraine? What should they do? Well, look, uh, in a person who's got vestibular migraine and it's disabling and it's controlling their lives, it, it, it's really important to think of how much impact it's having on your life and not be afraid of trying something regularly to reduce the frequency and severity of your symptoms. One thing that happens with headache but also with dizziness is that people start to become afraid of their symptoms mm. and it increases their stress levels and it feeds back into them having more symptoms so sometimes getting your symptoms under control and keeping them under control and giving you the power to keep them under control allows everything to settle down very significantly over time and sometimes treating vestibular migraine helps more than just those bad attacks of dizziness it can help that hypersensitivity that a lot of people suffer all of the time between times and understanding that you might make some impact on that area mm. is enough to help people feel, well, look, I, I am going to give something a go on a regular basis to try to prevent this. And it can be life-changing for many people. Mm. Thank you so much for making the time and for specialising in our, in our dizzy migraines. My pleasure.